Hey, I'm Cliff. And I'm Susan. And welcome to the Cliff and Susan podcast. Welcome to our discussion today about our time in Nashville. We are a married music duo based right here in Little Rock, Arkansas. We have a production company, a festival. We have the Entertainers Academy, and we are a touring music duo. We love to let you guys in on our lives behind the scenes and share with you what we're going, what we're doing and what we have been doing. This time, yep. we're going to talk about... Our our time on the Huckabee Show, which yeah. was awesome. It was our first time on national television, and um, we we've been on like some local stations before, and that's been really fun. But uh, it was I I will say it was nothing like being on national TV. Um, the the experience was super professional. They were super pro, big production, like huge cameras and booms, and it was, it was the awesome. lighting was amazing. Yeah, uh, really cool stage setting. So, uh, if this is your first time checking us out, uh, you can follow us on all of the, all of the social media at Cliff and Susan, and uh, we would love for you to hit subscribe and all those things on the channels and whatnot. So, today we are actually doing something a little bit different. Right now, we are of course recording our podcast, but we are letting uh, you guys in on Facebook. Yeah, so- we're also streaming it live. So uh, we will probably see some comments and questions pop up because we want to we wanted to take questions. Uh, I know a lot of people have questions about how our experience was or or maybe maybe just like a super random question like what what kind of piano did that guy use? Right. Or you know, right. you, you never know. So we're going to be answering some questions as well as just talking about our time yeah. and getting caught up on everything that we've been doing because we haven't done a podcast here in a while. Yeah, it's been while. a minute. So we'll, we'll walk you guys through that. And so if you have questions online and you're live, if you're not, if you're w- listening to this later, uh, definitely go follow us on our Cliff and Susan Facebook page because we most likely will do this again if it goes well. So if you have questions and you're watching live, drop them in the comments there. I can see them and uh, we will answer those at the end of the podcast or toward the later part of this. So anyway, so I, I think the the number one question is how did you get on the Huckabee Show? You know, and I, first of all, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you to Governor Huckabee. He had us on um, his show this past weekend, and um, the I guess the the question is how did you get on the how did you get on the the show? And um, I always tell this story. About eight months ago, I was at an event, and it was um, a better Little Rock. It was to Um, it was community leaders who were coming together at the Little Rock Country Club, and we were talking about how to make Little Rock a better place. And um, it was just one of those events that you go to and you you listen and you contribute, whatever. And so I saw Governor Huckabee across the... But who invited you? Camper Jack. That's right, Camper Jack. Yeah, Camper Jack. Jack Hendricks. And uh, so he's a dear friend of ours. And if you know Camper Jack, he's, he's from Pine Bluff. Actually, you know, roots from knowing... Governor Huckabee many, yeah. many years ago in Pine Bluff. But anyway, so he he invited me to this event. And I, I showed up and was just planning to listen and, you know, support and be a part of the community and whatnot. And uh, I saw Governor Huckabee across the room, and I was like, I need to say hello to him, you know, because my, my family um, – you know, my brother met him years ago and played bass, brought his guitar and had yep. him sign it. And he was the, the governor. Picture. Yeah. And so I thought, well, that'd be cool. I need to go say hello to him. And so it's, when I got... Sorry, I didn't didn't mean to interrupt, keep interrupting. But there's it, it was so funny to hear how many uh, common denominators we had with Huckabee, with, with my dad and his band and... And your brother, and also a lot of our fans from the from our shows at Oakland. Yeah, yeah, who know him, and who, yeah. yeah, it's been crazy. But um, so I saw him across the room, and I thought, oh, I'll just I'll go say hello, and, and you know, shake his hand and, and introduce myself. And as the pr- the moment presented itself, he, he was he got through talking to somebody, and I, I made my I was starting to walk toward him, and he came to me, and he shook stuck out his hand, and he said, Susan, and I was like. Well, Governor Huckabee, and he said, I'm so proud of you and Cliff. And so it was like immediate, like he knew who I was. And I was like, what? How does he know who I am? And so um, we are, by the way, uh, Stephen, I yeah, see Stephen, that. Yeah, Stephen, I turned it up. Uh, so let us know. Thank you. Uh, we we just checked it on our uh, camera before we did it, and it sounded all right. But you never know with Facebook. Uh, also, make sure you're watching in, in high quality. I don't know if that makes a difference or not. Um, uh, also, but. Seems pretty loud now. 
So let's uh, yeah, make Stephen sure you... chime in again and let us know if that's uh, loud enough for you. Yeah, y'all you know, give us the thumbs up or let us know too loud or a lot better now. He said, "Okay, awesome." Okay, cool. Thank you. So anyway, I I went to this event and we were uh, I wanted to meet Governor Huckabee. I saw him across the room and when I had my opportunity, I, I made my way and he stuck stuck out his hand. He said, "Susan," and I I was like, "Whoa, he knows who I am." And and so he said, "I'm so proud of you and Cliff." And Turns out he had watched us during the pandemic, and he had been watching our live streams. And a lot of you guys know that whenever we everything shut down during COVID and we lost all of our gigs, we went live online and started doing our shows. So he was watching. And a lot of you may or may not know, but he is a, ba- a fantastic bass player, bass guitar player. And he loves music and is such a huge music supporter. And um, so he and I talked for about 20 minutes, 20, 30 minutes, and I just really such a nice guy. And... Um, and I thought, well, that was just, you know, really something special. So he had given me his card and uh, I had his email. So I followed up. And this is a, a good thing for, you know, if you're networking, j- just in general, if you're networking, whatever industry you're in, but especially as musicians, we love to teach independent artists on how to network and, and you know, present themselves. And, uh, you know, basically any opportunity they may present itself, you, you can... Um, Make sure you follow up is what I would say here. So I, I sent an email to him and I said, it was so great to meet you. My mom and dad were over the moon to hear that I met you. And my brother and I actually had a picture of my brother um, that he had uh, that anyway, he had with him years ago and I sent it to him. So uh, and, and so I had the email whenever we released our latest fiddle and key song. That's when um, your grandmother said, well, you need to send it to Mike Huckabee. Send it to Governor yeah. Huckabee and see what he thinks. So we sent it to him. Um, I sent him the link to Fiddle and Keys when we dropped it January 20th, I believe. Mm-hmm. Might have been like the 22nd or something. No, it was the 20th. When I, That's right. The same day I sent it to him. I believe. But I mean, like, anyway. So I sent it to him, and he replied immediately and said, what a great song. I love it, you know. And so um, uh, the next morning I woke up at 8.30 a.m. I had an email from him saying, I've shown the song to our musical director, and you guys... Um, what, what happened? Yeah, I, I wanted to. I want to say, Justin, before you go, uh, he he said, "I wish I wish you needed a drummer." Uh, I, I was going to say, you know, we we're going to start doing original sets, so um, you know, send us a message with uh, anything that you have. So yeah, yeah, yeah we we'd, cool. we'd like to audition some drummers. So anyway, um, he had sent our song to the musical director, and he invited us to his show. And within twenty four hours of me sending the email to him to show him the song, we had. Ticket, plane tickets. We were booked on the show, ready to go. And we were like, what? We're on the Huckabee show. And uh, so national TV, here we come. And that was probably about a month. It was a month from, so we had about a month to gather ourselves and figure out what was going yeah. on. And so uh, that's kind of how we got on the show. I think. And we also had um, just a couple weeks to get uh, a song for Granddad recorded. We hadn't even started recording it yet. Yeah, and uh, turns out we got two songs. So, um, you know, whenever you go on TV, there's synchronization, licensing, and all of that. So we had to go through all of the the uh, the team of his, and his team was so fantastic, like just wonderful, wonderful people. I can't say enough great things. Yeah. Like, what, what do you, I mean? What was your overall like? What would you say? I mean, I, I, yeah, it was a it was a wonderful experience uh, from start to finish. I mean, they were extremely accommodating. You know, no matter what we needed, they were like, "We'll we'll get you whatever piano we've got." Several different pianos. You know, we can you know uh, whether they wanted the fiddle mic or pickup, and you yeah. know we and so it was really great to work with them, and uh, super easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I just. Well, so leading up to before we actually flew there and, you know, actually got to the um, the venue, we worked with the musical director to, like he said, make sure that, and I wanted to bring my piano shell, like my pink piano shell and all of that, but it didn't work out that it could make it. And so they had this beautiful shell that was um, already built and lighted and it was beautiful. If you've seen the video, if not, if you've not seen the video, you can go to our um, cliffandsusan.live uh, website and you'll find the links there to um, watch the show, but um, we figured out the logistics of the the stage. And Cliff and I, Cliff was playing fiddle on both songs. Turns out we got two songs, fiddle and keys, and then one other song, a song for Granddad. We didn't know which song we would do, and I said, Cliff, we need to do something that's obviously we're going to do original music, but something that shows the other side of us. And so a song for Granddad was the the one that we chose. Sorry, we've and, got we've always got distractions with our dogs. Booker is digging at this little. Uh, thing we gave him to lay down on and he's just he just 
pushes it all the way around. And, yeah, until and he if you're watching, and if you're it's watching funny. on Facebook, this is Gibby. He's my little Maltese rescue, and he's always in my arms. He's he's uh, if he's not, something's wrong. Yeah, and then of course the toy poodle Charlie Daniels is his name. He's he's at my feet always. Um, so yeah, a song for Granddad um, uh, was of course written for my grandfather, my late grandfather, uh, who passed away uh, years ago now. And, and I never got to meet him. No. Nope. And uh, Cliff was writing this song one day. I was running around town, and I called him, and he said, I've, I've got this idea to write this song for my grandfather. And he kind of played me a little bit of it, and I said, oh, that's awesome. It sounds good. And so um, by the time I got home, you had the whole thing. It was one of those yeah. songs that you wrote, like, immediately. Sometimes songs take yeah. a long time, but this one, I guess, happened Yeah, I don't, you know, I, you never can really control how long a song is going to take or how how little time it's going to take to write and that one just um once I got the chorus uh it it it, it was a lot easier because mm-hmm. I typically don't write about personal life experiences uh but I guess you know maybe it is a lot easier to write for personal life experiences cuz you kind of already have the words mm-hmm. and then you just got to you know uh, time together. Well, I will but. say you should write more from personal life experience because that one, I know a lot of you guys, if you've heard a song yeah. for Granddad, it is a tearjerker, beautiful song. And uh, so when we went on the Huckabee show, they, like I said, they gave us two two songs. Um, one of them made it actually to the televised version. So Governor Huckabee had us on and we sat on his couch and he interviewed us. And we talked about our music career and being independent artists and how we do music full time. And we talked about our Entertainers Academy, which is something we always want to make sure you guys know about. If you have any friends who are in the music business or if you are a musician, reach out to us. Check out entertainersacademy.com. Uh, it's where we help you guys learn how to do what we've done for a living and, you know, just all of the things. Yeah. And um, so we talked about that with him on the interview portion on TV that aired on TBN. And then we went straight to Fiddle and Keys, which is the high energy, fun song. We'll talk about that in a minute on how we ended up with that song. But then we also got a song for Granddad as another song. And actually, live, we went from interview yes. to a song for Granddad for, for the live audience. And then we recorded the um, right. Fiddle and Keys yeah, because, because they wanted in. Yeah. Right. We wanted in on high note. there Because, yeah, yeah. yeah we, we didn't think about that at first. We were like, oh, we're going to do that one first. And yeah, so. Yeah. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, same as our show. We mm-hmm. want to end on a high note, not mm-hmm. a slow song. Anytime we have a request for a slow song and it's like, you know, 7.59, we're like, ah, we got yeah, we to gotta we go gotta end this. on a bang. So we, um, we did that with the live By crowd. the way, uh, Barrett Albright, he said, y'all's music is awesome. Thank you, Thank Barrett. Thank you, Barrett. Thank you. Um, so that was really cool, getting to, to getting to do both of those songs and kind of show, um, I, like, I think you, maybe you didn't the, mention to, this yet. Well, but, just the depth of writing, and I would say, like, you know, just both of them are our stories. Yeah. Uh, our story, and also but just given, two different energy levels. Yeah, and, and yeah. I think it was a a perfect mix, kind of mm-hmm. just, it's hard to pick two songs, and if you, mm-hmm. if, you know... Before I, I wouldn't have probably picked those two. Right. Uh, of course, we would have picked fiddle and keys, but mm-hmm. um, I think it was just perfect timing that we had right. uh, gotten Granddad's song done, and we were like, "We yeah, we should do that one." And I think we've gotten a lot of um, really good feedback with that song. Mm-hmm. We started playing it live, um, and it's kind of been you know pretty loosely played. We 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 were just kind of making stuff up, and then once we finally got in the studio and came up with a, an arrangement for it that that really fit all together and uh, got it recorded, that that was really awesome to bring it to life with a, a full band that we've never played right, with before. Right, so, so uh, question I'm sure that a lot of you guys, did you have nerves? I'm going to ask you that. Did you have nerves, Cliff? I did not. Um, I haven't had nerves playing music in a long time. I, I There was one... Like, were you in your head at all? Because I'll tell you, I had nerves, but go ahead. I, um, you know, here's the good thing about having ADHD. Mm-hmm is even if I did get in my head, I'd forget about what I was thinking about in two minutes. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't really, I don't really get in my head about it. Um, I, I, I told somebody earlier, I said, like, Cliff was just cool as a cucumber because you were. Like, I was you know so what? proud of you. One reason is because I, I felt really kind of, I mean, obviously. Musically, I, everything was so pro. It was just well, easy. That and, I mean, it's really easy when, when you record your own stuff mm-hmm. and then you just got to play your own stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I had been in the studio doing all of that. So I was mm-hmm. super comfortable it was fresh on my mind and of course we've been practicing fiddle and keys and playing it on in our show so I wasn't really worried about that um I was maybe a little bit nervous um 
like I didn't have nerves, but I was nervous that I was going to say something stupid in the interview. <laughs> that that like that was in the back of my mind. Yeah. Uh, and I've told uh, I told mom and Nana and everybody that I've talked to about it so far. Like when I did start speaking, I was like, man, I hope I get somewhere with this because I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm saying. I just started talking and I was like, I feel like I Kinda need like to. like what we're doing right now. Yeah. We don't know what we're saying. We're just going to keep talking. I was like, but... I just know I need to add to the conversation and not just sit over here saying nothing the whole time right, in this right. interview with Cliff and Susan. And I'm like, I've got to be a part of this somehow. And I just started talking. I'm like, uh, yeah. well, and there were See teleprompters and, and Governor Huckabee was just so spot on with everything that he was able to um to, to say and introduce us and all that. So it was a really, it was a very natural feeling environment. I will say my nerves were not when I hit the stage. It was leading up to, I was all in my head about, is everything going to be okay? You know, I don't know. Which you always weird, are. I am. It's you just know, me the, in you, you are like that a lot. <laughs> um, and same with like the ZZ Top, when we opened for ZZ Top. I was all, You started I, getting in your head. No, and, the, the funny part is I'm, I have more nerves during the, the rehearsals because I'm worried about all of these I'm thinking, oh my gosh, Billy Gibbons is in his trailer list or in his in his um dressing room dressing room listening to me right now. Like I'm I'm in my head about someone that I look up to judging me in those uh, moments. During, during rehearsal and, then in ZZ Top, I was just trying to get my tone right. I wouldn't <laughs> really, you know, I wouldn't care boring. about it. So um but yeah, no, and I same same with uh, the Huckabee show. Yeah. I was I was all like, Oh, different and everything's different. I played a Nord. I don't know if you guys uh, any of the keyboard players out there and pianists, um, it was yeah. a Nord Stage 3 piano, and I'm used to Yamahas. Not that it was too terribly different, but it's different, you know. And um, Anyway, so, uh, yeah. I, the, one, the last thing I want to say is the, the only time that I've ever been nervous playing music is when I op- uh, not open is when I played at the Arkansas Country Music Awards with Aaron Enderlin. Oh, yeah. And it wasn't that, dang, I'm nervous, I'm going to met- mess this up. It was, dang, I'm nervous I'm going to mess this up for her. Yeah, it's, <laughs> you know? and yeah, it's, a, it's interesting. It's not about the crowd. Because if, I, if cause I was you, going up there by myself, I wouldn't have cared. If, if I messed it up, well, who, who cares? But well, this, is, this was her moment. And it's I'm like, interesting. <laughs> and I think what I can kind of wrap this up with is, is like it sounds like you and I both have nerves about our colleagues and what they think, not necessarily... Not that we don't love you guys in the crowd, but it's it, we, we're used to performing for people. But it's when you have that... Yeah, because most of the time, I'll be honest, I don't care what y'all think. <laughs> <laughs> I just do my thing. And I, but here's the thing. We you, do care. We love y'all. But, but you made me do that, actually. And it's it's funny that you get what? so in your, in your head about it. Well, when before I played with you mm-hmm. and so many... And, I mean, I, I had experience playing in Nashville, and I'd, I'd mess up and I'd beat myself up over right. it so much. Uh-huh. And um, But when I started playing with you, it's this is such a fat... You know, our show is fast-paced. It's just, yeah. Who cares? If you mess up, yeah, you, just you forgot keep, about yeah. it. Yeah. Those it's people not that we don't drinking. care, but you just roll with it. And you, like, if there's a mistake that happens, that's just, it's, it flies. You just yeah. And I'm, on. I'm really critical in my head. Cause if I, if I see a live band and they're playing, I'll hear every mess up. Right. And I'm like, someone, someone's out there doing that to me. Mm-hmm. And, but I, I had to get over that because we're putting on a show yeah. for a bunch of people. Just if I mess up, whatever, move to the next thing and make them forget about it with something else mm-hmm. good. And, so uh, while we're so. on this topic, so we got over the, you know, we talked about the nerves and all that. When we had the live audience mm-hmm. at Huckabee show, I was, that was one of the way, one of the ways I was able to be comforted and get out of my head was that I just was like, this is just a normal show. Yeah. Here's, here's the crowd. And I was looking at the crowd and like interacting with them best I could because it's different. We didn't have any, it was not one of those highly yeah. interactive and shows. And they were pretty however, far away from us too. But I, I just loved connecting with them and making those, you know, that connection that I could best I could. And so some of the people, what, did you do that too? Because I saw oh, them yeah. singing along. They were singing some of the songs and I was like, did they know yeah. the song or are they reading the teleprompter? I didn't know. But. And there, because there were, there were a lot of areas, like there was a monitor over here with some teleprompters. There were some cameras. So, so there were some. And the cameras were flying all around right. at us. So there were like, some views that were blocking. So I tried to focus on a little section of people mm-hmm. and I, would, I, I actually focused on this uh, dude that was wearing a, a he reminded me of jl jones the the cap he had a ball cap on but and, it might uh, have been the same guy young guy and he was yeah. singing your song at young the guy end? yeah yes. it was that young guy i was paying attention to him and then there was a woman was. and then there was a woman in the front mm-hmm. of the audience in the front of that same section mm-hmm. but yeah i would i remember i would say a line and he would like like kind of head yeah. nod of approval yeah and then he was singing the, the song at the end yeah so like um like well, if I couldn't tell him, then maybe Jesus will. Like, if as soon as I sang that, he was like, 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like that head nod of approval. Like, and then oh, he yeah, was like, hey, line. hey, I pray. And, for and I saw several people. There was, again, a, there's the woman at the front of the audience yeah. that I, so, was singing along. I was so like, maybe if cool. you were those people uh, and you were live in the audience, let us know. Were you reading the lyrics or did you just kind of pick up on, hey, hey, I pray for the day? Because it is a sing along. I mean, once you hear it yeah. three times, you kind of get the gist of it. But I right. was like, these people are singing our song with us. So it was kind of cool. So um, I don't know what else, you guys, if you're watching online and you are live, I see we've got quite a few people watching on our Facebook po- uh, page right now. Let us know if you have any questions, if we didn't cover anything. Or I mean, if you'd like us to do this more. Yeah. Um, so I'm trying to just think from what people have asked us. You know, we did it. It went live online. If you guys want to check out our performance, um, you can go to our website, cliffandsusan.live, and uh, you can find the links there. If you go to YouTube, honestly, the best way to find it, just go to YouTube and type in Cliff and Susan, and it's like one of the first things that'll pop up, and you will be able to find. There's three different videos. One is the interview uh, that we did on sitting on the couch with Governor Huckabee um, interviewing us on his show, the Huckabee Show. And then one is Fiddle and Keys, which is the high energy. We, we haven't really talked about the song. We'll talk about that in a minute, like yeah. the, the actual format when, of the song. And, and then after, you'll find the other one is the video of a song for Granddad. Yeah, after we do that, um, I know we've, we've answered a lot of questions that we've already asked, but we'll open it up to some uh, mm-hmm. commenters that are watching right here mm-hmm. and uh, see if they have any other questions or, or just any comments that we can uh, interact with. Just so you know, I'm looking at your comments here on my phone so if you are watching live and you drop it in the comments i will see it yeah. uh, so let's talk uh, i see the last thing that i would say um on if we were just recording this without any a live audience we would talk about the song fiddle and keys and um how we wrote yeah Uh-oh. i guess oh, we're, they got, oh. they've gotten they gotta go make sure we're secure yeah they're gonna run the out security the back door. check they heard something. um yeah so we we actually started writing that in california Mm-hmm. Uh, the song Fiddle and Keys. So Fiddle and Keys. Cliff and I met, this is another thing I would say that if, if you are new to our music and, and us, we met in 2016. Um, and I have been doing music full time and as a career since about uh, 20, I guess 2003, almost 20 years. It's been 20 years this year. Um, met Cliff in 2016. We immediately started working together. We fell in love, got married. A year later, we eloped in Vegas, um, and a lot of you guys who know us have followed our journey since then. But if you're new to us, uh, welcome, and yeah, we're married. We, we met, we started playing music together, got married, and then as we began our duo music, writing songs and all of that, we, we had to f- kind of find our sound, you know, because yeah. as, as a duo and what we do naturally or, or, or normally, I should say, is we're we're playing all kinds of music. We play country rock, oldies, blues. We know thousands of songs, and we just keep an, a, a crowd entertained wherever we are in the world, and we love that. But um, as a an original duo and how we brand ourselves, that was one of those things we were like, well, we need to kind of figure that out. So it yeah. took us a few years, and whenever we were in Santa Barbara, California, I said, you know, we we really need to write what what makes us special to me and our brand. If I'm thinking with my marketing hat, it's like. He's the kick-ass fiddle player, and I love that boogie-woogie, Jerry Lee Lewis, you know, high-energy piano play and play with my foot, do whatever. And I said, we need to write a song that is where Charlie Daniels meets Jerry Lee Lewis. And so then that's Yeah, that was literally the basis of the song. And um, I I don't know if we knew where to go with it at the the time. We just knew that 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 had to happen. Mm -hmm. We'd like, let's both have a shining moment in Mm -hmm. the song. And um, I because, mean, and uh, and also I said we need a showstopper, like because when we do "Devil Went Down to Georgia," that's our big song. That's the one. That's yeah. like we we show off. Where like I still do my thing, but obviously it's more about the fiddle. But I'm like, we need that kind of song. We need to write that song, but for us. Well, and it was also perfect because I mean, even Charlie Daniels, with without even thinking about Jerry Lee Lewis, Charlie Daniels had a, a very fiddle and piano heavy you know band like mm-hmm. devil went down to georgia south's gonna do it again all of their songs had prominent piano yeah, parts totally. and fiddle parts mm-hmm. so it really worked uh but also jerry lee lewis i mean it's it's it works together really well that that honky tonk and rock and roll rockabilly sound uh works together so we started writing we were like let's let's just make it about our story mm-hmm. and yep. so um i, I we, we started with you 
And of course, if you listen to the song, you can find it on Apple and Spotify and all that, or YouTube. And uh, we've got several links to us playing it live on the Huckabee Show so, on Cliff and Susan. And that but, was the first thing he said. So the song, Huckabee, he was Governor Huckabee was asking, like, mm-hmm. the song is our story. And he said, both of these songs are your story, and they actually are. But so Fiddle and Keys, the first verse is about how I was going about life before I met Cliff. And I said, BC before Cliff. And, um, you know, haha, that was kind of my, that's my joke that I, I use with us. But, um, and then Cliff, um, wrote the second verse about what he was doing before he met me. And then the last verse is how we came together and we used Johnny and June, Sonny yeah. and Cher, Charlie and Jerry Lee and all like that. So, um, anyway, that's the song. And I, yeah. I my, my question to you, and I can't remember, how did you pick the lick? Like, I know you wrote that lick. Yeah. But I, don't, um, I don't remember how you figured that out. I just remember, um, I know we came up, I, I think what we started with is, uh, cause you and I were at the piano and I had my, just get my guitar. Mm-hmm. I actually wrote it on the guitar, not the fiddle, mm-hmm. but I knew like I had to be able to play it. You know, we, we chose a key that was good for both of us, like mm-hmm. in a, in a range because we wanted it to sound, you know, which is in the key of D. It's in the key of D. It's in the key of D. And, um, that's within both of our range for the melody that we chose. And we were like, we want it to be fast. So I think you started playing something there. And, and we were in Santa Barbara, California. When and all this happened, I know so. I was listening. We were, we were thinking about Charlie Daniels mm-hmm. and South's going to do it again. And Devil went down to Georgia and we we're like, it's all about those, those parts because it has so many parts and pushes and, mm-hmm. and musical hooks and little earworms all throughout the songs. Earworms. So, I like that. Yeah. So I was like, it, it's got to have that significant part. And, um, what, oh, and what one, actually, one earworm, I don't know if y'all have listened to the actual recording, because a lot of you probably have heard the version on the Huckabee show. But yeah. if you listen to the uh, the the one that's out on Spotify and Apple Music and Amazon, you know, the one we released. And produced. It, and produced. Yeah. Cliff produced. Um, the oh, Yeah, we'll talk about that in a minute. But um, when he said there was a hot looking mama who was rocking it right. Yeah. There's a fiddle part that goes. <laughs> hey, also at the end. um there's a there's also cool a, a, a like a, a nod to Devil Went Down to Georgia. Oh, the really? Fiddle, yeah, the fiddle part at the end. You didn't even know that. What the heck are you? Doing? Which one part? I don't know. What it, part? It's the the actual devil, the devil part. Like the the intro is like oh. where it does that little. Um, so yeah, yeah, you can you can, it didn't even know. you can hear that in the in the at the end of the song. Um, but anyway, so going back to, I know we we did write. First, we wrote that, baby, won't you play me just a little, please? You play the fiddle and I play the keys. Mm-hmm. And as soon as we I had that... I think I actually came up with that. I'm going gonna, gonna to hang my hat on sure, that. Sure, I'll let me. you have it. I think we both did. But, <laughs> but either way, when we came up with that, I just knew it had to have something because we were like, oh, that would be a perfect intro, mm-hmm. not just a chorus because, you know... This uh, not not getting too geeky into structure, but you this, should get this geeky. Somebody might want to get geeky. This technically is not a. It doesn't have like a, a commercial chorus. It doesn't have a chorus like you would think about. That it it is a repeating line. It technically is the chorus, but it's really just a musical and lyrical hook. Is what? what that is that that in fiddle and keys. That baby, won't you play me just a little, please? You play the fiddle and I'll play the keys. Yeah, no, yeah, it's definitely. And it changes. I'll play the fiddle. You play the keys. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. Um. So that that is a lyrical hook. Um, not so much a chorus, yeah, but you would you would you would call it a chorus if you're writing for the music and yeah, charting it and everything. Technically, technical. that is, but um, so it doesn't have the quote unquote you know commercial. Speaking of Charlie like Daniels, think. if y'all want to meet Charlie Daniels, this right is there. our this is our poodle, our, our poodle. <laughs> we named him Charlie Daniels, and he uh, he is the baby of all of them. He is uh, the. Oh, hey, Stephen Barry said the easiest way to find Cliff and Susan is to go to Pop- Oakland's at Pop's, Pop's Lounge Lounge Friday and Saturday evenings. Yes, that is true. If you are local to Arkansas and want to come check out our show, we are there every Friday and Saturday. Or if you're not local to Arkansas. Yeah, it's still a fine. gas tank away most of the time for well, well, Dallas or uh, maybe Missouri. I don't know. Maybe not Missouri. It's a little Memphis. bit. Memphis. Yeah, Memphis. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so. Louisiana. Hot... That's a that's a good. A lot of people come from Louisiana. Hot Springs, Arkansas is just about, I don't know, about an hour south of Little Rock, so you could fly in to see us. But um, yeah, we are there every Friday and Saturday in Pops Lounge, performing from 4 to 8 o'clock p.m. Right after the thoroughbred horse racing, uh, over 100 years of racing, horse racing in beautiful Hot Springs, Arkansas, my home city. It's worth the trip, Ginger yeah, says. It is definitely worth the trip, and we would love to introduce you. Now, you know, while I'm 
going to pivot over here to some of the uh, comments and what I see here in uh, in our um, Facebook live stream. So like I said, we're going to upload this to our podcast as usual, but this is the first time we've gone live on our video portion, like letting you guys watch live when we record a podcast. And so we were like, you know, maybe that would be cool. And we were able to pump in the sound, meaning we were able to get all of the technology to work so you can hear what it sounds like on the podcast. But we will actually be able to take live questions. And if it works out well, which I think it's working out pretty I well, think so. I like then it. Uh, it will be uh, live on the podcast. So we could, of course, edit it later. But I think we'll just, you know, we'll upload this yeah. whole episode. And you guys, if you were live, you hear this. And if you're not live and you're watching this later, you can always follow us at Cliff and Susan on Facebook. And when we do this in the future, you can join live and be a part of this. Yeah. So um, I want to talk about the people, you guys, um, you know, you see a lot of musicians and artists and, and um, you know, I think this is one of the bigger things that has happened for us in our career. And when I, I told Cliff, I said, you know, I never want to lose the connection that we have with the people who have supported us for so many years. And I see Ginger popping up on yeah. here. I see. Also, Mark Klein. Mark he said Klein. He, can be a, he, he can be to us in 18 hours. 18 hours. He's <laughs> our he's our DJ friend. He has a blues radio show in Long Island, yeah. New York. Good to hear from you, Mark. We've been missing you. You know, Mark found us when we were streaming live in the, during the pandemic, just like Governor Huckabee did. Like, yeah. I don't know if you heard me talking about that, Mark, earlier, but that's how Governor Huckabee connected with us. And long story short, he, he was watching our show during the pandemic while we were all stuck inside. And that's when he discovered us and then followed us. And then when we released the song and anyway, that's, in, that's kind of really how that ended up that connection there. So, um, that was, um, one of the beautiful things about social media and us doing our shows and just, you know, being artists who love to connect with the crowd, wherever we are in the world, we never want to lose that connection with you guys. And I fear that, you know, We've had so many people like commenting, and I'm like, I spent all day Sunday trying to make sure I was responding to everybody. So if you haven't received a response from us, and you know us well, and we've had those conversations, or we're just now getting to know you, just know we love y'all, and we love to connect with you. So right. especially if you're able to come see us at a show, come come do that and say hi to us in between. We never take breaks, but after our show. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and Or send us a message, and we will do our best to respond. Um, I see Robin on here is yeah. asking, what are the dates you are in California? We will be at the Red Piano in Santa Barbara, California, all of July, and that is um, the entire calendar yep. month of July. We play six days a week, Tuesday through Sundays, and I believe the show starts at nine o'clock. Is it nine or eight? eight. It might be eight to twelve. I can't remember eight to twelve, nine to one, something like times, that. Just check our website, <laughs> and uh, we will be there. Uh, we would love to see anybody. You know, that's a beautiful yeah. um, place, uh, Santa Barbara. Mark, Stanley, I see Stanley on here. He sees yeah. us, and he's here. A lot uh, at at Oakland and, and sees our shows. Mark, we'd love to be on your show. Yeah, and we need to send him. Uh, so we've had several radio DJs stream our stream play spin. Yeah. I don't know what you. Spin him. I don't know if he's spin I don't think anymore. He's spin anymore. I think he's just hit whatever. But um, we button. would love to send you our wave files and let you hear and and play maybe our songs. And um, anyway, so. Yes, we love to connect with you guys. I'm just, I'm looking, I'm scrolling through right now, looking at everyone's comments here. If you have any questions or want to say hello, do that right now. And um, anyway, you know, today's episode was going to be about the show and how we got on there. And who knows, Governor Huckabee may be even listening right now. Maybe and we just want to say once again, thank you to you, Governor Huckabee, and thank you to your entire The Music team, City Connection. The Music City Connection, the Trey Corley. Us is a two-time Grammy-winning um, producer, and he is the musical director and is on keys and um, just can't say enough great things. We had we felt bad. We had so much great food in our green room. Yeah. <laughs> and I was yeah. so like, in my dang, head. Man. I was, should ask I her to really, go box. I know, right? We had such good food, and uh, my mom and dad got to make the trip out, and they got to see there. And uh, Michael Bland. Michael Bland, hey. How you hey, doing? Hey. Um, Mom and Dad got to be in the green room and get to visit with Governor Huckabee, and they got to see the the um, rehearsal and the entire production. So that was fun for them. And uh, yeah, so I'm trying to think of anything else that people maybe want to ask. Know. I don't know. I don't see any you, questions. Yeah, if you if you want to ask something, hurry up and do it. <laughs> we'll probably be getting off here in just a a few minutes, and we appreciate you guys hanging out with us. We had a good good little bit of showing yeah. on our live stream here. Uh, again, let us know if you. If you like doing this, and we'll try to do it more. I think we, whenever we're talking with a the purpose, they probably stay on more probably so than so. us just like 
looking at the phone, waiting on them to ask a question. I will say one last thing before we jump off here. Um, oh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's Let's a see. good can, point. Can you see Ginger, it, Ginger? Ginger just brought it that's up. Right so there. two things. We'll talk about what we're about to do at the next songs we're releasing. And uh, yes, so a fun story. Um, I was in, uh, we were getting, we were in the hotel, you know, so they, they flew us there. They had a driver for us to take us to the air, from the airport to the hotel and then from the hotel to the studio and, and everything. So we were like, you know, those big fancy cars, you see the black SUVs with all the blacked out windows, like who's important in there? You know, you see those at the airport. Well, we were the important people. It was us. It was us. Um, and such cool experience. But, um, so we get to the hotel and our driver is about to, you know, he, I was like, we've got an hour before our driver gets here. And so it was like, and I, I told this story online, I was like, enact, plan, get ready, ready right now. We've got an hour, get my hair done, make sure my hair's good, makeup, blah, blah, blah. So Cliff goes in and he's got his head in the, in the sink, getting his no, hair was, Yeah. Yeah. And, and I had my, I never, we never get ready in the same bathroom really. Um, and so but we were there, and I had a curling iron, and I, I rarely I, use a curling iron. I don't know iron. why you say that. We've we've always gotten ready in the same bathroom. But not here. Like, anyway, <laughs> usually we, whatever. I normally don't have a curling iron, I think no, is the thing. No, you don't. So Cliff leaned down and burned his arm. If you're watching live, yeah, you can I already showed see. it. I showed it off there. And uh, he burned his arm and uh, got and and hollered from the other room. And yeah, so that was that was the thing that he was on live TV or national TV with the what'd you call it? Oh, I, I I said the um out sta- outback steakhouse approved grill mark. Yeah, so that was that was no, our it, funny story. It bubbled story. up on me pretty good uh, yeah. the next day. And so it was that was our funny story, but it, it, uh, it was definitely fine. hurt like hell when it first happened. But it was mm-hmm. all right. I think adrenaline took over, and I yeah. didn't even know. Yeah. <laughs> so um, that yeah. So thank you for reminding me about that ginger and uh, the, the curling iron story. Um, we met some awesome people just, you know, once again, fantastic experience. Yeah, hopefully We're like, how do we do fans. that again? Let's do it again, Sam. Play it again, Sam. So, yeah, uh, Jimmy Fallon, Jimmy Kimmel, um, <laughs> any of the late night show hosts, you know, if you You want us to rock some another... keys and fiddle, let's do it. Let's do it. So, um, next, what's next before we end the um, the podcast here? Uh, where, I don't where... know. I want to just kind of go over what we're about to do with Brie and some of our songs. and Yeah, you know, we're coming out with another song with Brie. Uh, that, called Neon that, Dreams. Yep, yeah, that I produced mm-hmm. and we, we all wrote together. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, that's going to be a really, really cool song. We've showed it to a couple of our musician friends. And we might even release our own it. version. We're like, yeah. maybe we should do a version too. So that's cool. And then we've got several other songs that... Um, we're going to continue to release about once every five to six weeks is our plan. So we want to keep new music from Cliff and Susan coming to you guys all the time. Um, once again, thank you so much. Uh, all of you have been so awesome sharing our music and watching us have an opportunity that, you know, obviously we didn't plan for, but when we got it, we were ready to go and uh, hit hit the stage. And it turned out better than I could have planned, I would say. Like, yeah. It was cool. So. Well, and everyone else that uh, that might be watching that hasn't seen our show at Pops Lounge, if you're local, come out every Friday, Saturday during their race season all the way till May. Mm-hmm. Uh, come out four to eight. We'll be there. Stephen Barry, let's see. It says, looks like oh, it's yeah. at least a semi-permanent reminder of the dangers of cohabitation. Yes, marriage, the bruises of marriage, the, the scar of, of uh, yeah. I've never, I've never burned you. With anything, I've never, I've never <laughs> impaled you or you know. <laughs> done anything like that. But I'm no. pretty sure this. I, I don't know. This might not even be the first time that I don't know. But it's pretty happened. large and in charge over there. So anyway, well, you guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us on our podcast today. We'll say goodbye here on our um, on our live stream. But let's end our podcast like we usually would. Uh, how is that? It's been so long. It's been I so long. I just know I do this. You guys, thanks for, thank you for tuning in today and check out all of our social media, TikTok, Instagram, twi- Twitter, Twitter, At Cliff and Susan, <laughs> all of the things, Cliff and Susan, and uh, we will see y'all next time.